Okay, thank you. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever the case may be. Uh, thanks for joining what we hope will be the first of many webinars hosted by the Laura Alliance devoted to building intelligence. My name is Byron B. Miller. Um, I'm the leader of the Smart Building Work Group within the Laura Alliance. Uh, for those of you not familiar, uh, the Alliance is a nonprofit um, which defines something called the Laura WAN Protocol. Um, in my day job, I uh, work at for Semtech as Director of Wireless Marketing in the Smart Building segment, and I'll be your uh, moderator today. Um, let me start by um, spending a few minutes telling you about the LoRa Alliance and the LoRa WAN protocol, and then I'll introduce our four panelists um, who are all eager to tell you about their smart building solutions. Uh, we'll have a Q&A at the end, um, and you can submit any questions as we go along in the Q&A box um, you should see at the bottom of your screen. Uh, of your screen. Um, a bit about the Alliance, um, it was started five years ago with a dozen or so founding members. Um, it quickly grew within a few years to more than 500. Um, those are located all around the world, uh, including some of the largest companies um, on the planet like Cisco and Comcast and Orange and Alibaba, Tencent, STM, Microelectronics. Um, so very, very, um, very good adoption and support from um, key players uh, around the world. Uh, you might ask why we need another wireless pr protocol standard when we already have so many. You can see some of them located there or shown there on the screen. Um, but really, uh, it's all about IoT. Um, you know, as IoT usage has exploded in the last few years, it's apparent that um, many IoT devices will need to operate off of battery power and cover long distances uh, or longer distances than some of the existing protocols allow. They also need to operate in very difficult wireless environments. So, um, not, not all of the legacy protocols were designed with those environmental factors in mind. Um, and LoRaWAN is one of the few that was developed from the ground up for exactly those types of uh, applications. So how is it different? Um, really, uh, you know, you can categorize uh, the groups of wireless protocols into three um, sectors. One is um, sort of land-based protocols, which are quite short range, um, generally um, high data rates or, you know, moderately high data rate uh, transmission. Um, but they have poor ability to penetrate through walls and things like that, um, and they have a, a relatively short battery life. Um, even things like Bluetooth, as compared to LoRaWAN, will have a short battery life. Um, cellular, of course, we're all familiar with, um, and uh, you know it's it's great in that it covers you know lots of lots of areas. Um, we're all uh, you know it's it's a secure transmission system. Um, and you know has a number of uh, you know widely available. Um, what it's not great at is um, it's still relatively short battery life, mm -hmm. even with um, some of the advancements uh, or new standards like narrowband IoT. Um, you do have to pay an ongoing subscription fee just for the connectivity, um, and not everybody has deployed things like LTE, um, CAD-M, or narrowband IoT um, consistently around the world. LoRaWAN, on the other hand, is um, is a uh, you know very low data rate transmission, um, but it has extremely long battery life um, and a very flexible deployment models, um, and you know uh, extreme um, uh, you know very very immune to interference um, and can penetrate through uh, many structures. Uh, and if you could go to the next slide. So uh, just to highlight a few things here on, uh, you know, sort of what's different, um, probably one of the biggest things is that you can um, either use a what we call a public network, which is similar, similar to the cellular model. People have deployed, you know, a number of gateways and you connect to their network for a fee each month, or you can de deploy your own private network um, as you would with Wi-Fi, for example, um, and you can do this completely self-managed or in partnership with one of the ecosystem members who will manage the network for you. Um, it is a bi-directional standard, so you can th do things like firmware over-the-air updates, 
Um, it's got a uh, very secure um, encryption with two layers. One is for the actual link and the second is for the payload. So, um, you know, much like your uh, cellular network, um, the, the, the network provider, Verizon, Orange, whoever it is, can't see the data that's passing through, um, only, only you'll receive that. Um, it's very ener energy efficient. Um, it's not uncommon to see three to five years of battery life. Um, some as long as 10 years if you use a little bit bigger batteries. Um, so, you know, sensors are pretty low cost. So the quickest way to kill a project ROI is to have to replace batteries every six months or a year. Um, for some applications, the sensors are also can be placed in pretty difficult areas, um, making the battery replacement an even bigger problem. Um, to go to the next slide. Um, so I mentioned that my day job was at Semtech. Um, Semtech is the provider of the underlying IP for the physical layer on which the LoRaWAN MAC layer runs. Uh, the LoRaWAN MAC layer, however, is defined, owned, and certified by the LoRa Alliance, not by Semtech. So there is a relationship. Semtech is a founding member and on the board of the LoRa Alliance, but the LoRaWAN protocol is um, completely um, related to or owned by the LoRa Alliance. Next slide, please. So um, just a final uh, wrap up on the Alliance. Um, I mentioned it was a nonprofit, it's open. Um, anybody can go online right now and download the specification and um, understand how LoRaWAN works or build a product based on LoRaWAN. Um, there is a certification program. Um, so if you see something with a LoRaWAN certified mark on it, uh, that means it's gone through the Alliance uh, certification program and should provide a a stronger measure of compatibility, um, you know, with other uh, with the network if it's a device. Um, it's a global specification. Um, it works in in all sorts of regions around the world in the sub gigahertz band, um, which is um, has a much better um, propagation uh, characteristics than the 2.4 gigahertz band, which is where Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and many other things um, operate. With that, um, I'll get on to the speakers. Um, I believe we have uh, MicroShare up first with Charles uh, Pamel, um, followed by Skip Lee, then OrbiWise, and Tectelic. So, um, I will, uh, uh, Charles is um, one of the co-founders of uh, MicroShare. Um, he's also the co-chair of the uh, marketing committee in the Lore Alliance. Um, he's got 20 years experience in, um, you know, uh, large transformation projects using software, I believe, uh, also including um, some time at Accenture. Um, and uh, he can, uh, he'll tell you a little bit more about MicroShare and their solution. Charles, go ahead. Thanks, Byron. Um, okay, I think we can skip that one. <laughs> We just talked talk a little bit about it. So a uh, little bit about MicroShare. So we are a data management uh, software um, platform. We are basically um, in the context of LoRaWAN, uh, we are an integrator. So we uh, leverage sensors from the market. So we don't manufacture any sensors. Um, we leverage connectivity, which is provided either by public operators um, or by um, you know, uh, private uh, solutions that we, uh, we implement for our clients. And on top of that, we build uh, data management apps to basically make some sense out of um, all of the information that flows from the sensors through the, uh, through the networks. Um, and the, the idea is to make it super easy for our clients to, uh, to consume. So we very much target um, end users in facilities management. Uh, that's really been our focus. Um, and the idea is to have a single, um, you know, a single subscription that covers uh, absolutely everything the client needs. They are very focused on, on an outcome. Um, rather than worry too much about what pieces of, of the technology stack um, make it happen. So some of the examples of things that we have deployed um, across, uh, across the world for, for our clients include things like uh, creative cleaning for toilets or, or bathrooms, depending on how you want to call them. Um, a lot of environment monitoring, so being able to deploy very easily uh, wireless battery-powered sensors in a building that may have a, a 20 or 30-year-old uh, building management system is, is, is really, really key for a lot of our clients. Um, we do a lot around occupancy and usage, just understanding 
um, how and when spaces are uh, utilized again in all sorts of different uh, different scenario from you know from offices obviously with desks and meeting rooms to hospital where you want to know how much beds are utilized um, and uh, and maybe sometimes in, in more of a security kind of standpoint so we're doing some uh, uh, some work in prison now um, things like leak detection around around water there's really kind of a, an endless um, a stream of different things we can do uh, very much uh, bringing it together uh, all of the the, uh, the various uh, sensors that are available and that keep coming um, and, and very much uh, you know profiting from the fact that we have this whole ecosystem of LoRa uh, Alliance members that are producing and certifying their products um, that we can confidently then bring into our solution uh, to for our clients uh, next slide please um, so I think we touched a little bit on that in, in Byron's introduction, but this is very much the reason why, you know, as a software company, you could argue we, we don't actually care that much about what the connectivity is. Uh, the reality is we do because um, what LoRaWAN brings to us and to our clients is this whole set of, of capabilities. The fact that, you know, we can uh, very easily pick up uh, uh, solutions depending on what our clients ask for because um, everyone operates on the same standard. Um, it's easy to install because they are all both battery based, so you don't have to ask for an electrician. But also, um, unlike Wi Fi, where you have to enter a lot of security on the device itself, uh, with LoRa One, all of the setup is done remotely on the cloud uh, on the network server, which means that from a, a technical um, a skills needed to install these sensors, uh, it's, it's really, really low. Um, and, and typically, again, from a, a range point of view, uh, in some cases, we're able to just deploy with um, a public carrier, so in the places like France where you have two full networks uh, across the whole country, then it's literally ship, ship sensors to, to the client, uh, register them on, on, on our side and on the network server, uh, and you can be up and running in a day. Um, and when that's not the case, of course, we can, uh, we can help with uh, deploying infrastructure, but uh, it, it's very, very flexible. Next slide, please. So an example with uh, one of my clients in uh, in London in the UK. So this was uh, they are a large uh, construction uh, group company. They I think they turn over about two billion pounds a year. Um, this is their global headquarter in uh, in central London, um, and they were seeing that as uh, more and more people were coming into the office, um, they had no real way to figure out what was the right level uh, of cleaning that they had to do, uh, both from a, a desk as well as a a toilet's point of view. Um, so we installed uh, sensors in every single toilet, both um, you know, uh, at the entrances to count the amount of uh, motions coming in and out, uh, on every stall to kind of figure out you know, what was the actual usage uh, on an hourly basis. Um, and that really gave them a, a clear insight um, of uh, what was going on. We also put feedback uh, buttons in the, uh, um, uh, in the toilets, that, again, allowed a super easy feedback loop uh, for end users to kind of say, you know, there's a problem here, you need to come and, and give more clean. And so we worked with three partners on that one, um, a Taiwanese company called Broan, who makes uh, a lot of the, the sensors that we use, uh, Skiply, who you get to hear from in a, in a minute, um, and the uh, network was provided by uh, British Telecom or, or BT. Um, so again, this is kind of, for me, a good example of how we typically will work with multiple uh, parts of the, of the LoRaWAN ecosystem uh, to bring together something that the end user doesn't really need to know you know, where the various bits and pieces uh, come from, they just get something that's really meaningful to them. That's brand new data that could never get before uh, without having to do, you know, a, a lot of uh, uh, integration work. And if we skip to the next one, please. Um, so this is just an example of, of the installation at that site. So uh, you can see the, uh, uh, you know, super simple ways for uh, people to uh, tell how, um, how they felt we, we, were, uh, uh, we were doing. And that obviously, uh, any signal of poor experience automatically triggers a ticket in their existing uh, computer-aided facilities management system. So again, we're integrating with existing systems rather than uh, creating new new areas where they have to go and uh, and check in for for, for data. And uh, that's I think a good intro to the next speaker, Jérôme. Yes, it is. <laughs> So I'm Jerome, I'm the CEO of Skippy in France. So uh, I'm an electrical engineer and basically Skippy, we are a device manufacturer. And uh, we provide the, the, the simplest uh, interface in the world that are buttons. So I think we're going to go to the next line. Uh, what we do is uh, that we are connected, connecting the, the, the real world 
with uh, complex IT systems and our buttons, they can be used to simplify a lot of process and uh, a lot of things. Uh, for instance, you can uh, do live satisfaction surveys. It's uh, not so far from what uh, Charles presents. But instead of sending people on site to ask questions to the people, then you only have to position your new buttons to your desk and then you will have a, a real-time overview of the uh, customer experience. Uh, we have also uh, on-demand services buttons. Maybe you have seen it in the, uh, in the hotels when you want to call a taxi. You can uh, do uh, maintenance and cleaning. That's what Charles presented to you. Uh, we will talk about the time management, and we also have a use case uh, in logistics. But of course, we do not invent buttons. I mean, it existed uh, <laughs> before us. But uh, with Laura, and we can connect those buttons securely uh, with a lot of third-party systems like uh, BI uh, systems or ERP, and for a very fair price. I saw there was a question about the, the, the pricing of the, the connectivity. So first, of course, with lower run, with, with a private network, you can reduce drastically these costs. And uh, instead of connecting this button with Wi-Fi, where we should buy a, a lot of uh, uh, different routers to, uh, to allow the communication, with only a couple of gateways, you can uh, connect uh, thousands of sensors. So uh, there are many advantages and many brand new things that we can bring with lower one uh, connecting those buttons. Uh, next slide, please. I, I won't talk again about this, uh, this use case. Charles did it very well, so maybe we go to the next, next use case. Uh, maybe you, you, you know ISS. ISS is the, the world leader of uh, cleaning facilities. And um, their problem was that they should prove to the customer, to their customer, that the staff went on site. And those sites are, are very, I mean, it's only one, one guy uh, that is uh, cleaning the, the, the rooms maybe three times per week. And of course, you can then connect something to the Wi-Fi of the customer because sometimes they are cleaning bank offices. So uh, if you use uh, the Wi-Fi of the bank, they won't agree to, for, for that. Or you could use 3G, but it's uh, very expensive and you have to, to consume a lot of data. So with the simple buttons, they just have to place it into the, 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 the places where they want to clean the room. And when the people arrive, they press the, the green button, and the, when they leave, they press the red. So that's very super easy. And then they can uh, monitor the SLA of their cleaning contract. And you see there are other buttons remaining. So they can use these buttons to order consumables. If, for instance, for instance there is no more soap in the, in the toilets, or uh, they, oh, there is also another button if they, they want a, a sales guy to, to, to call them for an additional uh, cleaning, for instance. Next slide. But what I want to, to, to show you is why LoRaRun is definitely the best solution with this kind of, of application, because they try another system before. It was a system, it was a kind of small tablets that was wired. And uh, they had a lot of troubles with this device, and that's why they decided to switch. Uh, first of all, you have a, a lot of reliability problems with this kind of device. Uh, because uh, it's very complicated. It's Android-based, so sometimes you have updates, uh, sometimes you have problems with the screen. So um, they, I think after three months, 60% of this uh, uh, kind of devices was out of order. The second thing that is that it is wired. Um, we have the experience that when the customers uh, uh, have wired devices, there is always one guy that finds it very well to, to, unplug, the, to unplug it. And it's it, very often uh, they have a, a problem with that. And of course, it is an IT security nightmare uh, because those devices are connected directly to the internet. That means it can be a really a security breach. Um, this is something that won't happen with lower one. And the, with lower one, so I, I, I did this calculation. I think it's uh, 86,000 less energy that we will consume during the whole lifetime. So it's very efficient. So with two batteries, you can uh, have an autonomy about six years. Six years, it's huge. It's of course totally uh, wireless and the IT security is provided by design. And that's, that's what Byron showed you uh, at the beginning of the presentation. So really in this case, the prices of the device that itself is relatively similar. 
but the installation costs, the operating costs are really, really in favor of uh, lower one. Thank you. Thank you, Jerome. Uh, we'll move on now to uh, OrbiWise and their um, partner SysDev. Um, and they are going to tell us a little bit about a solution that they've developed um, for structural health monitoring, um, which then uses LoRaWAN to connect and gather the data. Yeah, okay. I'll turn it over to you, okay. Stefan. Okay, thank you. And uh, good afternoon or good morning or good evening to everybody. Um, I'm working for OrbiWise. Uh, I am responsible for sales in EMEA. Uh, personally, I have uh, a multi-year, a long experience. I will, I will not tell how many years instead of sales and business development in EMEA in, uh, in ICT companies. I mean, I worked a lot of time in, in, in telecom, in, in IT, in digital solutions, and in the last few years in the IoT. I mean, um, OrbiWise is a company, he's headquartered in Geneva, and uh, the main product of OrbiWise, main experience of OrbiWise is providing a software solution for uh, LoRa connectivity, LoRa One connectivity. Uh, the main product is OrbiWine, which is a LoRa network server, carrier grade, uh, which is being used uh, actually in a number of different countries in the world. Uh, in, in all the continents, I would say, from Asia and India, uh, the biggest uh, LoRa network, uh, probably worldwide, uh, and then in Australia, in Europe, uh, in LATAM, and in North America. Uh, so we have customers in all regions, different market segments, uh, telecom companies, service providers, enterprises. And uh, we also have experience in a number of different uh, uh, vertical markets uh, because our customers actually have solutions and provide solutions in all the, the, the vertical markets. Today we will talk uh, briefly about uh, uh, our uh, a project that we are working together with a partner uh, who is also, which is also a member of the Lower Alliance, is Dev. Um, and uh, for a uh, building health uh, and security. Next slide, please. Um, actually, uh, SysDev, with our support, developed a new approach to structural health monitoring, uh, a product which is named the SHBox. Uh, what we experience in Europe, uh, especially, but not only in Europe, is that uh, a lot of infrastructures are quite old and they now show serious structural and material deterioration uh, phenomena. And uh, in this scenario, it's uh, really important. And we have uh, unfortunately had experiences in Italy, as you probably most of you know, of uh, uh, issues with the structural health of, of, uh, of some of these structures. Buildings, and not only buildings, bridges and so on. So a monitoring, real-time monitoring of the health of the, of the infrastructure is, is really important. And um, uh, this, uh, this use case shows an innovative solution for this health monitoring based on the IoT and, and on LoRa. Uh, the solution includes uh, multi-sensor nodes based on LoRaWAN um, and the network infrastructure provided by, by OrbiWise uh, and uh, with the application uh, developed by SysDev uh, uh, is able to collect data and send it to, 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 to the central server. Um, this is a real, I mean, what we showed uh, in the IBS uh, exhibition and uh, is a, a real application and a real uh, case of uh, structural monitoring of a pub public building, actually a school located in Northern Italy. Next slide, please. Uh, inside the building, which is covered by uh, a, a reduced number of gateways, I think there are a couple of gateways only, uh, indoor gateways. Uh, there are 20 multi-sensor nodes that have been deployed, uh, both in the, in the basement and at the, the different level of the building. 
and uh, they collect uh, uh, a number of physical parameters, strain, tilt, rotation, seismic event, temperature, humidity. And these data are transmitted to the cloud server using LoRa, uh, LoRa technology, LoRa One technology, uh, through the OrbiWise network server. Uh, these data are processed and aggregated, and uh, they 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 are used to uh, build what is called the digital twin of the relevant structural elements uh, for the whole building. Um, this is uh, what would what what we define as digital win is the structural smartness of the building itself. And uh, we compare historical data with the actual data to uh, give an alert uh, at any sign of deterioration or problem. And uh, so we can verify the integrity of the building and also, as, as I said, build the structural history, which is used to, to as a database to apply uh, statistical and machine learning algorithms. Uh, why did we use LoRaWAN? Because uh, this gives the capacity to manage a big number of sensors with a single gateway. In this case, it's only 20 sensors, but if you can imagine a much big, bigger uh, building area, campus, where you have uh, um, hundreds of sensors, and uh, they can be covered by uh, also by a, a reduced number of gateways so you cannot basically use uh, or uh, wi-fi because of the area you need to cover and the number of hotspots that you need to, to, to deploy and also because uh, uh, indoor penetration of the wi-fi is much uh, much lower um, simplicity in deployment and configuration the structure of the lora one is a star structure so every sensor is connected to the center of the star and there is low energy consumption, so you don't need to actually uh, have electrical supply to all the sensors. So they can be deployed, they can be also moved in case of need if you want to monitor a different area. Um, so all these benefits that are listed are brought to the, to the, to the choice of LoRa One S technology, connectivity technology. And also, uh, this scenario uh, is, is also used to serve customers which are located in areas which are not served by public networks or not well connected by public networks. And we know that even in cities and especially in basements, it's sometimes it's quite difficult to get, uh, to get uh, uh, coverage by the public network. <laughs> Next slide. So here we see a number of screenshots from the, the actual application and the system, uh, where on the left hand side, you can see uh, the two, two screenshots that show, <clears throat> I mean, of course, <laughs> unfortunately, the, the, it's, it's quite small, so it's difficult to read, but uh, the list, there is a list of different uh, sensors placed in different and grouped in different groups. And then on the right hand side, you see a map where, uh, of where the, the, the building is located with the sensors. And on the bottom right, uh, you see a 3D uh, model of the building. And uh, the green areas show <coughs> areas where you have no alarms. Actually, uh, in order to show that, uh, that uh, 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 overpassing a certain threshold, you can get an alarm. We, you can also, let's say, change the threshold and uh, and uh, and uh, and set uh, and set the alarm in order also to double check that the system is working. So uh, SH Box as as uh, uh, is able also to show data directly inside the Beam application to give the possibility to compare the building real estate to the expected one. So it's also a sort of, uh, um, let's say, preventive uh, uh, maintenance uh, application. Uh, I think that's, uh, that's it for my presentation. Okay, thank you, uh, Stefano. Um, we will move now to Roman Nemesh. Um, with Tectelic, um, 
Roman, I'll let you introduce yourself and uh, please go ahead. Thank you very much. So um, Tectelic, as everybody knows, is uh, developing uh, LoRa uh, devices and base stations as well as the modules, other software modules. We joined LoRa ecosystem about three years ago. Until that point, we were developing a lot of uh, wireless equipment, 3G, 4G, um, custom equipment as well. So um, starting with the LoRa ecosystem, um, three years ago, we realized actually we can achieve a lot of um, uh, value bringing to our customers without actually the complexity of, let's say, of 4G systems. So we have a very good understanding of 3G, 4G systems, and we can compare them, if you will, Apple on Apple basis and understand where it adds value to have a LoRa, LoRa let's say, uh, systems deployed or technology and versus where it potentially makes sense to deploy in the future NVIoT or CATAM devices or maybe 5G devices. Um, let's go to the next slide. I would like to make sure we spend more time on talking about the, um, the products. Um, as I mentioned, Tectalic provides a complete end-to-end -end solution for the LoRa ecosystem. So we, we started with the gateways and today we have uh, 12 different variants of the gateways uh, sold pretty much globally. We're building two more different gateways. Out of them, eight are generic, means anybody can purchase. There are four and building two more are custom. It means that's designed for certain customers, certain applications, maybe certain frequency bands. After that, we de start developing a lot of uh, devices, and we do have our own network server. We have ONN server, geolocation server, and provisioning server as well. That said, Tectelic works with every ecosystem partner. We do not, everything with Tectelic develops is actually in code, works smoothly with all partners. So we talk here about MicroShares, KP, OrbiWise, we could have add Laureate, you know, Sanet, Activity, uh, My Devices. So we don't have a single, I think, element in our in our in our portfolio that actually is is limited. Let's say to function only with the Tectalic, either gateways or devices, things like that. And I think that's the beauty of uh, of the ecosystem, um, because in order to become successful, I think we all have to we all have to make sure that all elements of our of our portfolio work well or actually function well with other partners um, and because that's the only way we probably can achieve global scale. Um, today we'll talk about predominantly devices and uh, and that's where Tectalic focuses right now our attention. Um, so for the next probably you know foreseeable future we're going to be spending a lot of time developing new devices or sensors applications and the reason for that is that's really where the problems are and it doesn't mean that it's our applications have to be fully developed or integrated with the end customer. Tectalic value is providing, if you will, hardware. So we build base stations, we build gateways, we build devices. But then in order to assist the customer to integrate it very smoothly in their, in their solution, we have to provide some kind of applications that is very easy to integrate, let's say, for being MicroShare, or for being for my devices or anybody who, who would like to integrate it, or even Azure uh, companies such as, let's say, Companies that use, let's say, Azure or 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 um, AWS uh, IoT platforms. Um, so that's really where we're going. Next thing is to just to because people know we are generally looking at when we build the devices, we like to build custom devices. We don't really like to pursue and build the devices that everybody is already doing, because in a way, it's kind of creates competition in the marketplace and. It's a very broad field. IoT is a very, very open, open field. I would say we're just at the cusp of we're just at the cusp of IoT. We'll call it evolution, and there are many different problems to be solved, many different use cases. So it makes sense to invest in areas where somebody hasn't invested yet. So if you look right away at the Tectelic devices, they're very different from many other devices. They're generally more complex, or they're designed to be in a very harsh environment, more industrial applications. We do have one kind of a smart room sensor, which we'll talk about it, but it's really our platform device that we use for many applications. After that, everything is a much more focused industrial application or agricultural application, things like that. Um, the key, uh, we can go probably to the next slide, just uh, this. So the key when I think about, when I think about LoRa and I compare it to, to NBIoT or CATAM, which we actually also develop, it's, it's important to realize that LoRa gives you, and because we build those devices, and I don't show them here, 
LoRa gives you the same performance pretty much for 99.9% .9 of use cases for a much lower battery life. It's approximately, I would say, on average, one, one third of a battery life. If you do true comparison, it's about half the cost. And it's generally speaking about more than, more than one half to maybe one third of a volume, right? Because we have today devices that do the same functionality for LoRa and NBOT. But that's not the value. The value actually, what people don't realize is integration. Um, I'll give you an idea today that we just integrated one of our first NBOT devices with, a, with, a, with a, one of the larger OEM providers in, in, uh, in Europe. So it's either you know, Nokia or Ericsson, let's say, but we, we work with both. And one of their uh, major tier one operator in Europe, so they can use them. And it's effectively the same as this uh, uh, all-in-one smart room sensor. It took over a year exactly to do the integration. So it's one OEM vendor, one operator, tier one operator, and it took over a year. And it involved us, it involved OEM vendor, it involved actually chipset provider, which particularly in this case, we're using a sequence out of Paris. And everybody is a very knowledgeable in this area. At the same time, integration of a lot of devices will take maybe you know two three four weeks maximum for any device you can imagine it becomes less and less so when we think about the end-to-end -end cost and how quickly you can scale it there's no there's no in my mind there's no comparison we can build 20 30 devices per year tectalic for LoRa, and we're lucky if we can do two per year for nbot just because the complexity of the integration of the back, back end that is where i find the most the cost will go and many small companies don't really realize the complexity of the back, back end integration. And that's what we're facing with when they have to then get their devices into the tier one networks. So we was mentioned why LoRa is so good, for the, at least from the Tele point of view. Well, it is because of absolutely low cost. It is because of reliability, low power consumption. And, you know, and low power consumption means very long battery life. And numbers I'm going to show you here we today don't build anything unless five year battery life because we think that's the key for very high or very very positive return on investment. It's one thing when you deploy 10 100 devices in a building, but it's a completely different story. And 10, 10 to 100 devices, you can replace the batteries once every two years, not a big deal. But if you deploy 100,000 devices, a million devices, it is not feasible, practically speaking, to replace batteries every two, three years. You have to be looking at five years out, things like that. <clears throat> and we'll look at the, maybe the last thing before I start going about the like talking about this particular, our use case is, why we focus on today on smart buildings? And I think people always say, follow the money, right? So you have to always look from business point of view, investing in new technology, you have to look where people are spending money because that's where the real use cases are. And today, there's no, I think there's really no secrets that the highest use case for LoRa, that the fastest to recoup at large scales are metering. So it's generally water metering and electric metering. There are literally millions of meters that are being sold and deployed globally. Um, now, I think last numbers I've seen, it was something like 60 million meters sold and, and deployed. And many of them, if not most, actually are LoRa, based on LoRa technology and using today LoRaWAN application uh, um, uh, protocol. Next one are generally asset tracking. And by the way, Tectalic does not participate in building the meters because there are lots of companies that do that very well, but we have lots of gateways that support that. Next biggest application today is, is asset tracking. There is all kind of asset tracking, in building, out of building, you know, remote asset tracking on the ships. We're talking now tracking assets in very remote areas in Canada, in other, other parts of the world where there's no any coverage whatsoever. And we can, we can build LoRa, low cost LoRa networks and track them. We're talking now tracking animals in the forest. So um, people talk about rhinos tracking in, in Africa. So there are lots of applications where you generally don't have any infrastructure and you, don't, and you wanna be able to track things, not just in buildings and not just in the city. So there are lots of use cases like that. Um, and then the third one that's becoming very obvious, it's actually real estate. And that's what we're talking today. And why real estate is so important? Well, real estate, monitoring real estate or managing real estate or maintaining real estate, what we call generally kind of a smart buildings, is really important because 
everybody knows, everybody who owns the building or maybe rents a building understands how much they spend money year after year after year on all aspects of maintenance and support of buildings. And we're talking about multi-story buildings or office buildings or universities or schools or all kind of buildings. There's just, if I look even at Tectalic, we rent a building, you know, in, in Canada here, we pay for the rent and then we pay for the, all the maintenance and support of the building. That cost is over 30% of the rent. So if we can reduce that by, you know, even 20% or 10%, it's a significant, it's, it's tens of thousands of dollars per year savings, direct savings, because it's the same services, maybe even better for lower cost. So for that reason, smart buildings today becoming very, um, it's probably the third area, I, at least in the, in the, from my experience, where we see a lot of use cases being deployed, where use cases where there are customers with the real problems and we solve them and actually they see return on investment fairly quickly. It's much quicker than agriculture, I would say, and many other fields that people are pursuing today. So what Tectelic did, you know, we developed a number of devices to help solve many use cases. And here we're going to show only one, but you can imagine you can apply it to many, many. First of all, we developed an all-in-one smart room sensor, which is, you have to go back. Sorry, you didn't have to. Yeah, so first of all, we developed uh, one device, it's called all-in-one smart room sensor. I think it's today for sure the smallest in the marketplace or in the world and it has over 10 different sensors built in and user can configure them to do anything they want. Everything that's listed here, this device can measure. It is guaranteed today five year battery life with a 50 transmissions per day. You can sense all the time, but you know, every 10 seconds, but you have to transmit only 50 about per day and you will guaranteed five year battery life. It is 42 by 42 millimeters. It's very, very small. It's just a, it's a coin cell battery inside the largest 1,000 milliamp hours, and it's about, I think, 15 millimeters tall. That device today, we, we already sold this year over 30,000. We're probably going to go close to 40. Next year, we expect to sell well over 100,000. We're quite confident. It's used pretty much everywhere today. It has all the features built in. So somebody can use it for temperature only, some for humidity, some for motion. But the combination would really gives you, um, would really gives you kind of the value. You can reconfigure it literally 10 times or 100 times per day, what you want it to do without losing even one milliamp of battery, just the way it's done. Um, so it's really a device that can provide all kind of environmental sensing in a building or you know, around that. You'll see what we, what we mean by that. The next one everybody knows is, um, we all talk about energy savings. Well, the best way to do energy savings is to understand how much energy is being consumed and controlled. And for that, we have now developed the AC outlets and switches, which is showing there, actually, it's the North American style. We're working also in European right now, North American ready in volume production. And this is not really yet for consumers to deploy, but let's say a new building being built or school or airport. We have companies or being remodeled. We have companies now who install day one smart switches versus actually just normal switches. Also why they like LoRa versus Zigbee and Z-Wave technologies or Wi-Fi because it's much more reliable than those other technologies and it's not the one that is going to probably change over time and can be fully integrated into a larger ecosystem. At home, it might be yet too early to use LoRa, maybe, but smart office, you know, uh, university, school, airport, examples like that, hospitals right now, that's exactly where these switches are go and they will not just simply can turn on and off. They actually will monitor the power consumption, then understand when the power is used, how much is power is used, and why it's used as well, to make sure we can save energy in the future. Next slide. Hi, Roman, sorry to interrupt. Um, we have several questions that I wanna make sure we have time for at the end. So if you could okay. um, I'll speed uh, up. kind of wrap up shortly, that'd be great. Okay, sorry, I didn't realize I was going too fast, so too slow, I was, cool. Okay. And then, so the next one we put in, and I'll just pretty much on that, we'll stop. Um, next one is e, uh, meeting room e-ink tablet. And that one is really full integrated. It's the tablet that you can put on any door, any panel. It can full, it's full integrated with the Outlook on, and uh, Outlook and um, Google Calendar and can um, let people book the rooms as well as see the rooms are being booked right from their, from their applications. 
Um, it is battery powered and can run up to 12 months um, on a batteries, uh, four AA batteries or power of ethernet. And the last one is absolutely the one we want to show a little demo. It's the smallest Bluetooth uh, LoRaWAN asset tracker that can pinpoint location of any asset inside the building. It has a AA battery, slight larger than AA battery, and depending how often you move that asset, will give you five to 10 year battery life. So really, what I'm trying to say here is go into the next slide, just a little bit quicker. So by, by combining all these features, you can see we can address many, many different use cases, anything from meeting rooms to hospitals or check rooms, anything like that. And it's just a combination of the devices and sensors. And we're going to show you one of those use cases being applied in a video here. Now, that said, we don't use just like telec devices as I said. In many cases, today in most cases, we actually use many other vendor devices to integrate, help the customers come with the use cases, and in order to drive, if you will, the sales of our gateways, as well as adoption of LoRa ecosystem. Next slide. And I don't want to spend too much time on it, but factually, with the devices that we and other companies have today, one can already provide full monitoring and utilization of the meeting rooms, offices, environment in the buildings, anything from HVAC, temperature, humidity, water leak, CO2. We can monitor power consumption. We can monitor all the asset tracking in the buildings, as well as provide security and alarm in the buildings. And on that, I would just like to show a very short video. It's one minute. And it really shows how it's done in real life with a very little simple device, the last device we showed you here. I think what's shown is shown in office with a normal Bluetooth beacons, just like in any park would be, sorry, in any shopping mall. Then you attach an asset tracker to any device you would like to track. And the reason is we use Bluetooth to locate and LoRa to transmit the data because it's much low battery life and it's much longer distance. So one can see the device moved very, very accurately from one location right inside the meeting room. And that was pretty much with a, one LoRa gateway and a few beacons, LoRa, uh, Bluetooth beacons in the building. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Roman. And thanks to everybody um, who presented. Uh, we do have some questions, um, which uh, I want to try and get to here. Um, we have about eight minutes and I always try and make sure we, we stay on time and finish these things in an hour. Um, so uh, let me just um, sort of read these out. Um, maybe I'll make a comment and um, uh, any of the panelists who want to um, uh, elaborate on it, uh, please feel free to do so. Um, so there's one question about um, the interference inside a building. Um, you know, usually commercial structures are uh, you have a lot of concrete and steel and iron, things like that. Um, and there's a question about um, how to ensure good communication with the gateway and um, some placement guidelines of the gateway relative to sensors inside the building. Um, so, I don't, Roman, you want to you yeah. start that one? Yeah. Okay. Sure. So, I think that's probably quite easy. Um, you know, I have a lot of background, obviously, in you know, wireless equipment. So, one thing I have to think about it is, in any building, there's lots of always all kind of uh, radio waves and all kind of propagation issues and all kind of noise. So LoRa and any other technology don't have any, really, there's not any better, it's not any worse. However, you have to think about this way, that first of all, we operate in a, in a, light, in a frequency band that is not that frequently occupied, if you will, between, between other bands in LoRa because it's ISM frequency band in the buildings. Now, Second thing is, because of a very low data rate, LoRa has ex exceptionally long what's called, what we call it RF channel propagation. We have 160 dB. It is exactly the same as 
it is exactly the same channel, the same distance you can achieve, if you will, or the same penetration losses as you would get with a 4G or 5G networks. If you position a small LoRa gateway, which is $200 inside the building, just inside the building, you generally cover, we, we cover five story with a single gateway, five story buildings at least, that are 40 by 40 meters. It's a concrete structures. You just put it somewhere in the middle. In a Calgary downtown, there's actually, well, Calgary City IT department, they deployed in a 12 story building, they deployed three gateways. Three gateways for about total of $700. Uh, US, they deployed, they deployed three gateways, covered the entire 12 story building, which is a 40 by 40 meters. In the same building, they have spent over $100,000 to deploy Wi Fi infrastructure, just to give an idea, because you are looking at a very low data rate. So you don't really need a lot of, you don't need a lot of bandwidth. You don't have to put hundreds of Wi Fi access points like you would do generally at home or airport, anywhere else. You need only a few gateways because the data very, very short. So I would say if you want to cover any kind of a building or home or something like that, the best way to do it is putting an indoor gateway on the inside. Outside, it works as well, but you might have to then put more gateways and cost from an efficiency cost point of view is not the best option. Does it make sense? No, I would say no. That's one thing people don't have to worry about. It's not like a Wi-Fi that, that, or Zigbee or Z-Way protocols that really are not designed to be long range, in many cases they're designed to be very, they, they require a lot of bandwidth. And, and in that case, you, you're always requiring a very high modulation schemes, like 64 com, something like that. You need to have a very high SNR. LoRa operates almost like CDMA technologies. They operate at the concept of spread spectrum, which means you can operate below thermal noise. So from RF channel point of view, it's as good, if not better, than 4G or 5G technologies in the future. Okay, thanks, Roman. Um, does anybody have any um, uh, thing to add to that, Jerome? Do you want to do you want to add to that at all? Um, our experience is that uh, I, I totally agree with what uh, what was said by Roman. Uh, we are covering large uh, shopping malls and uh, with only one gateway, uh, preferably at the top of the building. I mean, uh, how do you say that? We uh, we we put it at uh, five meters, uh, a height of five meters, approximately. And we cover the, the the whole shopping malls. There is no at at that time. I do not see an example. We cannot cover a shopping mall with one gateways. So it's a very. That's why it's very cheap at the at the end to uh, to to cover a, a building with a lower one. Okay. But what what we see in Paris when you are in La Défense, it's that's uh, for large towers. We cover three stairs down, three stairs up with one gateway. But this is mainly due to the fact that the, the, some buildings have a, a heavy metallic structure uh, in between the stairs. Um, that's the. Yeah. I would just one can add it like this. Think about this way: for every gateway you're going to deploy in a building, you will spend at least a thousand times more money on on the devices, at least. So the gateway cost becomes completely completely typically irrelevant. If you deploy number large number of devices, it's, it's the devices drive the cost. Okay, uh, I wanna fit in a couple more uh, questions here. So we did have one um, about uh, GPS reception in the building. Um, in the interest of time, I'm gonna kinda keep that, keep moving along here. But um, as you, you know, uh, GPS reception quality within buildings um, really is, uh, you know, in completely independent of LoRaWAN, and we've all experienced that it's not particularly great in many cases. Um, so for the asset tracking types of applications, um, what most people are doing is relying on Bluetooth beacons, which have to be installed every, you know, um, 30 feet or something like that within your building. Um, and or a combination of Wi-Fi uh, location information to uh, predict the, lo the location of something. Then they, they typically use LoRaWAN as the link to send that information from the tracker back to, um, you know, to your d data collection um, or application. So, uh, you know, it, it, you can't really rely on GPS within a building with or without um, LoRaWAN, you need to use some other techniques. Um, 
There was also a question about um, some ROI case studies. Um, those, uh, at, at the Laura Alliance is in the process of working on some of those. Um, there has nothing really been published yet, uh, but I could also refer you to, um, you know, the individual company websites along with uh, the Semtech Developer Portal. If you search for Semtech Developer Portal, you can go there and there are many, many use cases and white papers and um, different, um, you know, different types of material there that probably cover much of that information. Um, we also had a question about uh, the cost of connecting a sensor. Um, so um, I don't know if, if somebody wants to address that, but there's different business models which are employed typically. Um, in many cases, you know, people like MicroShare are offering a full solution. Um, which includes the application, um, you know, the dashboard, the data analytics, those kind of things. In that case, you pay a subscription um, for access to their platform. Um, and, you know, everything in terms of the connectivity is bundled in with that subscription. So um, generally in commercial building deployments, the gateways are the only things that are connected with the cellular um, link. Uh, and again, that's usually bundled in with uh, the cost of whatever you've, um, you know, contracted with to run the network or to um, uh, provide your, your application. There are ways you could build your own completely private network um, with on-site um, servers and things like that, in which case there would be absolutely no recurring cost. So any of those things are, are possible. Um, I'll close by just mentioning that um, we had uh, several requests for uh, sharing the slides as people had to had to drop off at various times. Um, we will do that. We will send them out. Um, the uh, recording of this webinar will also be posted um, on YouTube, and we will send um, everybody the link to that in case you want to re-review something or share it with um, with a colleague. With that, um, I will close it, and um, you can see there on the screen how to get in touch with us. Um, if you have any questions um, that weren't answered here, please please send them there, and we will do best to respond. Thank you, everybody, for joining, and I think we'll we'll close the webinar now, Anne.